How's it going guys? My name is the Pokey Kid. Welcome back to the channel and yet another Pokemon solo run challenge video. In today's video, as you can see on your screens, we are playing Pokemon Fire Red. And in today's video, as you can see by the title, we're going to be doing it with Blastoise of all Pokemon. Best ever speedrunning starter Pokemon like ever. Like, I'm not even kidding. Maybe Typhlosion or Swampert's Battle. I'm not really sure about speedruns, to be honest. At least not anymore. I name myself Bronson, and my rival gets named the lovely, beautifully polite name of Arshat. <laughs> originality! Blastoise gets the nickname Turt because, well, originality, am I right? <laughs> so original, very funny memes. Apparently he gets a Bulbasaur, however, when I fight him, he actually has a Charmander, so for the entire run, he is going to be having Fire-type starters, which, I mean, I'm not going to complain, let's be honest. I get the level up and 69 experience points. He complains that he could pick the wrong Pokemon. However, I don't really care. We go to we go to Viridian City and we get the parcel to take back to Professor Oak, which probably has like some form of Apricorn Ball because he wants a custom ball. But we get the Pokedex and five Pokeballs with which we catch a Pidgey and a Rattata named Fly and Cut. And we go straight to Brock, who, well, took all of three hits to be yeeted out of the stratosphere. Turt wants to learn Water Gun, which I teach over Bubble, which is, well, Bubble's only half the power. And I go straight to Misty from there, with Mega Punch and Mega Kick in tow. The Gym Trainers go down relatively easily. However, I'll say it this way. Misty actually took a couple of tries. She went down the first try. To my surprise. Turt went down. Mainly probably because I didn't heal. That probably didn't help. Bubble. The outspeeding just just really hurt at the end of the day, because, well, I got outsped. What am I going to do? So we lost the first run, we heal up, we go straight back in, because I know I can win at this level. And what do we do? What what do we do? Oh yeah, that's it, we win. We, we win, because we are obviously the best Pokemon players in the world, right here. I am obviously the best in the world in the business, because I learn 80% accurate moves and try to hit Pokemon with them. Haha, <laughs> big funny meme. I know, right? So, after that though, we go up to the rival. After teaching Water Pulse to Turt over... I think I taught it over Bite. Or Mega Kick. Correct? Yes, I taught it over Mega Kick. We go and heal up real quick, and we go straight to the rival fight. Which goes absolutely swimmingly. Admittedly, not as good as we would have liked, because I had an accuracy drop, which obviously sucks. However, we still hit every single Water Pulse after that. He complains that we're too good for him. And obviously we are. We go to Bill's house and he gets mixed up with a Pokemon. But I have one question. Where the hell is the Caterpie? The Caterpie? Clefairy. Where did the Clefairy go, Bill? What did you do with it? Did you kill it? You definitely kill it. We get the SS ticket and we can go straight down to Vermilion City. After healing, of course. And we can go to the SSN. And your boy gets Dig first and accidentally teaches it to Rattata in instead of Blastoise because <sighs> I'm obviously big brain, biggest brain ever. It's like, oh my god, I am. and I don't even know why I'm walking through the grass, but I go through the underground tunnel and we ask for this trade. However, she wants a Nidoran male for a Nidoran female, which is obviously not a Blastoise. So we don't even we don't even like entertain that because. What do, you, what do they think we are, you know? We're obviously the best players in the world at just soloing with a boss. Look at this trainer dodge. Look at those pro plays. Look at that trainer dodge, my dudes. Pro plays. And these trainers just go down with a blink of an eye from this dude. This boy is thick. And with that, we have made it to Vermilion City. We go heal real quick. And we go straight down to the SSN. And we do exactly what we did with the Mewtwo run and skip every single trainer except for our mandatory rival battle. And this dude wants a ticket. He's not allowed to have a ticket. But as I said, we go straight through to the rival battle with some yeeting around. And well, he goes down even easier than the last time. Even with the accuracy drop, he goes down even easier. Well, maybe not easier actually. Because we did get accuracy dropped like three times, and I go for the water pulse, forgetting that I'm disabled. However, he goes down without any trouble. We rub the captain's back, and we get the HM01 cut, which obviously comes in handy for going towards a rock tunnel. 
and obviously we needed to get into Lieutenant Service Gem. So we teach cut to our Ratata really quickly, and we go straight to the gym. Now, as a water type Pokemon, you would think that Blastoise will struggle in this gym, right? He honestly, really easily, absolutely yeeted this gym. I was actually quite worried about it as well, because obviously Blastoise is only what, level 28, 29 at this point. And obviously Blastoise being a water type, I thought he was going to get absolutely bolted out of the skies, but we take four hours to pick trash cans because pro player of Pokemon, yes. However, I was actually doing a lot more damage than I thought I would. Even just Pikachus that are 10 levels lower and have like a base spit out of like 40. I was actually thinking that Pikachu was going to do a lot less, uh, take a lot less damage. And then I remembered. Blastoise is a fully evolved Pokemon. Yeah, I, I have big brain, as you can tell. And then that Pikachu sort of told me that this battle is going to be pretty damn trivial. So, with this fight, as you can see, he sends out a Voltorb and Turt one-shots it with single water pops. Pikachu suffers the same fate. Raichu actually manages to tank not one. No, he doesn't get one shot. He got that thick boy booty. Look at that thick boy. For some reason, I go into my Pokemon and go to switch Blastoise in for some random reason. I think about going for the Mega Punch because, well, it's a physical move and Blastoise's attack stats are very, very similar. However, it just doesn't have enough power. So I go for the War Pulse and he gets confused. So, uh, yeah. And for the first time on the channel, I actually go towards the Rocket Hideout. And... Well, Giovanni just went down in a matter of about 12 seconds, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all. He went down to, I think it was four water pulses. Just, oh my god, this game is, these games are very easy at times, especially with many, many fights. Just, I mean, admittedly we are 13 levels higher, but like, Onyx, one shot, water pulse, one shot. Kangaskhan actually took a couple of hits, however, it went down very easily as well, at the end. We all, and Giovanni complains. So I actually forget to get the Zilfskirt for two seconds, and then I go pick it up. I go straight to the Marowak fight, because I want to get a few more levels before I take on Erika. Marowak goes down in a single hit, we yeet through, and we go straight to Mr. Fuji. And we get the Poker Flute. Which is... Muy importante! So, after going all the way down the Fuchsia Gauntlet, and losing to Koga multiple times, we go and beat Erika on the first try. And then after losing to Koga a couple of more times, I then realized that I'm an idiot. And that I could have got HM3 Surf and HM4 Strength to use against his poison types. Like, I am small braining this game. Like, how do you forget to get vital moves? I don't even know, man. But this battle became much easier after this. Admittedly, I'm 90% sure I still lost at least once after this. Because Toxic, just... Eek. Toxic gives me the ick. <laughs> but we pick up the rare candy alongside the warden in this house. We teach Strength to our turtly boy, as Strength is a pretty damn good move in this game, honestly. It's an 80 power normal move with no at all effects. It's 100% accurate, which is, makes it much, much better than Mega Punch, which is only 85% accurate. But we go back to Koga one more time. And this time, I actually probably had much more of a chance to beat him. Admittedly, at level 50, you would think this battle would be very, very easy, right? Well, even still, it wasn't that easy. I water pulse the coughing, and I decide to surf the Mook. A coughing goes down to another surf, and Weezing takes three surfs because I couldn't get a better roll, because RNG, am I right? But at level 51, we have beaten Koga and gotten our fifth gym badge. We go straight to Silph and lose. So, I decide I've got to grind up, and I went back to the Celadon game corner, got all the possible items that I could have, and grinded out $80,000 to get Ice Beam, and the rival went down with three Ice Beams and two Surfs. Giovanni suffered a very similar fate and went down to just a couple of Surfs. What can I say? This thing is a monster at this point in the game. Lost has now become, like, Mewtwo. 
I debate getting no, the Master Ball, but I decide against it. Then we go straight to Sabrina, who, well, didn't put up any fight whatsoever at, at all, because her Pokemon are just so much lower level than ours. And we go straight down to Blaine's Gym, and then I remember that I can't get in without the secret key, which I yeet through the Cinnabar Mansion to go and find. Obviously, Cinnabar Mansion is annoying in its own right. And forgetting about secrets, which is, just makes it so much worse, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, really? I don't really know why this was in the game. Why did they lock you out of the gym? I, I don't really understand it. But we go through and get the secret key and TM22 Solar Beam, because if I need any money, I can just sell it. But this gym was so easy. This was like Brock's gym levels of easy. I didn't know there was nine badges, but poly, poly wag evolves three times from Gen 2 onwards. That question don't make no sense. It's like they just copied it from the original game. <sighs> Definitely like they didn't do that for a lot of things at all. Nah, nah, not, not at all. What do you mean? What do you mean? So we go and fight Blaine, who... One, two, three, four, five. Blaine's Pokemon are not alive. I'm going to get copyrighted for that. Woo! And we get the Fire Blast H to HMTM. But we go straight to Giovanni's gym after that because I only found out that you can actually skip the Savvy Islands today. And, well, Giovanni suffers the exact same fate as Blaine did. Five serves and your Pokemon are gone. Why that Rhyhorn is not evolved, I have no idea. It's level 50, man. But we go straight to the second to last rival fight who actually gave us a little bit of a push, but nowhere near to the same extent as he did earlier. Uh, this fight was much easier in this game. Ice Beam, Ice Beam, and Ice Beam gets rid of the Gyarados, and obviously Charizard goes down to a single Surf. But we heal up and go straight over the Victory Road after getting some healing items, and we absolutely yeet our way through the badge checking gaze, because why the hell not? We have eight badges, and this... This victory road was actually kind of easy. I'm not gonna lie to you. I forgot which one was the rare candy uh, way, and I went the wrong way, so I had to go back not once but twice because I big brained and fast forwarded. I then accidentally ran into a trainer. Oh, big brain, but I collected the rare candy, and we went through even further into the victory road. I accidentally ran into another trainer. We yeeted a boulder like 100,000 meters. We go down and push the boulder through, and we go out the end of victory road. So, we take one last look at Turret before entering the Elite Four for the first time. And, well, uh, we got absolutely bodied by Lorelei. I don't know what else I expected. But then I decided to grind up Big Boy Turret to level 74. And you might be wondering, why 74? And honestly, I don't really know why. After taking another shot, we got bodied again. But as I said, I grinded up Turret to level 74. And you might be wondering, how the hell did you grind it up to 74 at this stage of the game? Well, you see... For starters, I didn't have the bike. So I went down the cycling road and yeeted all the trainers there. Then I went down all the water routes in the game. Yeeted every single trainer. And we came back even stronger at level 74. I then realized that I hadn't deposited my other Pokemon yet. But we go to take... Lorelei on one final time, and the extra levels made all the difference in this fight. Oh my god. Lapras was actually a three hit KO, but even still, went down with these. I actually managed to forget uh, to heal here, so uh, we, we, the less we talk about that, the better. But I go through to Lorelei one more time after buying full restores after selling some, some items. But as I said, we go into Lorelei one more time, and she goes down even easier than before. So we can just absolutely yonk through it. I go to make sure that my recording is still going, and obviously it is. So we absolutely yeet the hell out of Lorelei's team, and we actually managed to surf the cloister. Everything else went down on a couple of earthquakes, though. Lucky day, am I right? So this time I actually remember to heal, big brain me, and I actually saved before the Bruno fight to make sure I healed, and we did. E goes down so damn easily, I was wondering if I was even playing the same game. Oh my goodness me, he went down easy. I was actually kind of scared of the Agatha fight, I can't lie to y'all, but 
just just observe surf ice beam surf ice beam surf just so easy admittedly i'm using a proper world that's 20 levels higher but we don't talk about that we go straight to lance after this and oh my god just lance would i expected lance to be harder but yeah uh, i've got no comment but finally, we can go to the final battle with Arshat. And he says hello, and that I am not good enough to actually fight him, and that he's always going to be better than me, which is obviously bullcrap, am I right? Or am I right? So, for the obviously most important fight in the entire run, he decides to lead off with that godforsaken Pidgeot again. Oh my god, I hate that thing. Oh my god, it's terrible. And like, ew. So after that, he goes into the Executor, which goes down to yet another single Ice Beam. It's it's actually a range here, I think. But it easily ends up going down to a one-hit KO Ice Beam anyway. And the obviously most dangerous Pokemon on his team is gone. This pro That Pokemon could have like set up Leech Seed again. Because as you guys saw in the yellow run, that thing was absolutely just, no, I didn't like it. Alakazam goes down to a single earthquake with absolute ease. Admittedly, level 20 difference is always going to prove different there. I had to go for an ice beam on the right on and get another one hit KO. Your boy is feeling strong now. Big turt, big Kurt, big turt energy right there. He then goes out to the Gyarados, and this thing has Intimidate, which lowers our attack, so we can't strength it to death. So instead, I use Ice Beam not once, not twice, but three times. I was actually not sure if it was a 3-hit KO or a 4-hit KO, and obviously it was a 3-hit KO, as you guys see on the screen. He then goes into the Charizard, and you all know what's going to happen here. Charizard gets surfed out of the entire Pokemon League. He just falls out, just cries in the corner. But that is how you can solo run the entirety of Pokemon Fire Red with a Blastoise. Obviously, this run was hella, hella unoptimized. This run could have been made hours shorter. Levels could have been way, way lower. But he complains that he's already gone and it's not fair. Wah. Cry me a river, my boy. Apparently, I grew up a lot since we left with Bulbasaur. But there is your Hall of Fame with your boy Blastoise. Turn the level 78 Blastoise with a time of 13 hours, 34 minutes. We have now officially solo ran the entirety of Primal Fire Raider with a Blastoise. But if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as these videos really do take quite a while to make. This video alone took me 10 hours to make. Yeah, you heard that right, 10 hours. And most of that is editing. This game only took me like two and a half hours to record. But as I said, like and subscribe, share it on all your socials. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace.